number one of our 10 step guide to successful events. So step number one, or tip number one, is don't reinvent the wheel. Almost any event has been done one way or another, right? Um, and our best friend here is Google, right? <laughs> so if you wanna do an event, first thing that I would like for you guys to do is Google it. If you wanna do a grand opening event, if you wanna do a book launch event, if you wanna do a showcase or a concert, Google it and find um, different uh, events that have been done and look at their marketing material. Look at their Facebook page. What have they been, what have they been saying about their events? Um, look at their YouTube page. What kinds of videos have they put on there? What kind of hits? What kinds of hits are, there, uh, are they getting from the posts that they're making? So for you to even imitate someone, make sure they're getting good hits, okay? Don't <laughs> imitate the ones that are not getting good hits. Then you're just following, you know, the people who are not leaders. So you want to follow who are uh, people who are on top of their game. So make sure that you evaluate those when you pick um, who you want to imitate. Um, and imitation is not a bad thing. It's actually, it could help you save a lot of time from having to think and start from scratch, you know? Um, search for events, event ideas online. If you don't know what kind of event you wanna do, you can also say, and Google is such a great thing, you can be like, how can I um, get more people in my store? How can I get more book sales? How can I get more ticket sales? And uh, trust me, you're gonna find some answers on there, but it's all about in your research. Um, look at the photos online. Look at their photos, what kinds of photos they put up. Look at, read their blogs. Most, um, if they're really savvy, most of them will have a blog. <coughs> and see what they blog about. Um, get as much information. What was their theme? What did their banners look like? What did their flyers look like? What, did, what information did they include in their flyers? Obviously, the most important thing is date, time, place, right? So what other things, what keywords they put on there to make you come? Free giveaway or um, wine tasting, you know? So those kind of kinds of things are very important when you are trying not to reinvent the wheel. Step number two, who's that? That's me. <laughs> Target your market. And that's very important because what is an event if all of the people that you have invited are not the ones that want to buy your product, they're not the ones that want to buy your CD, are not the ones that want to buy your clothes. So it's, it's not going to be important if you don't take the time to understand who your market is. If you know who you need to reach, then you don't you don't have to waste your time on frivolous gimmicks that cater to unintended customers. Have you ever had a uh, magazine or newspaper people come to your office or call you and be like, oh, you should um, advertise on our magazine because we reach out to the whole South Bay area. We, but you don't need the whole South Bay. But what if you just need the beach cities? What if you just need the inner South Bay? You know, so then you're spending all your money for, and people looking at your Add, and it's not even going to work for you because it's not the target that the market that you want to target. So, who is your target market? How are you going to know who, who they are? You're going to ask, are they males, females, or all? Um, what is age group are they? Are they preteens, teens, young adults, adults, seniors? That's all going to make a difference in your marketing. What household income bracket do they fall under? Below 55k, 60 to 80, over 100? Uh, basically. Uh, are your customers, uh, do they have a lot of spending money or they don't? Are they more into the deals and the freebies? So you want to know that. How many members are in their household? You want to know if they have kids under 18, over 18. That will help you kind of cater your event to who they are. Um, do they have smartphones, Androids, or iPhones? Are they internet or computer savvy? Are they using social media? Where do they live? What zip codes are they really in? So for example, let's say you have a candle, oil, fragrance, incense store, right? Um, so assuming your target market is women aged between 25 and 55, 80% of them, these are all made up because there's you know, a, a little sample that I want to be able to give later. 80% um, mothers, 60% stay at home moms. Um, average house, household income for them is uh, 120k. Um, average members in their household is four, so you have the both parents and the, the kids. Uh, they're computer savvy. They're, they're, they have smartphones and they use social media. Um, these are their immediate zip codes. These are the surroundings. So your immediate zip codes are those zip codes where your customers are really coming from. Then your surrounding zip codes are those that you want to reach because maybe they don't come to your store. Um, they are mostly wine and food enthusiasts. They love to work out. They love live music, and they watch TV, 
and 75% of them have iPhones. What if you know this about your customer? That's awesome, right? Then you really need, you really know what to give away, you, you really know what discounts to give them, you really know what to promote, what products to push, and you know what areas you need to advertise your events to. So event tips for this candle store. Partner with a nonprofit to focus on helping stay-at-home moms find their passion, right? So if 80% of your customers are stay-at-home moms, um, this is a great thing because then they're gonna have a lot of resources and they might even come bring their volunteers and help you for your event, right, if you're gonna partner with them. Communicate through email, text, or push notifications. Because we know that they're computer savvy, they have iPhones, um, they have social media, so that's a great way to communicate with a lot of people these days. If people don't pick up the what? Phone. Thank you. We have one alive <laughs> student here. Um, so uh, the next thing is advertise your loyalty programs to your immediate zip codes. Does anyone here have loyalty programs? All right. What are, what are loyalty programs? If you buy more, you get more discount. Or the more you come, the more discount you get. Something that will get them to be a loyal customer to your store, to your products. Um, and your so you want to advertise your loyalty program to your immediate zip codes because they're gonna want those people that shop at your store they're gonna want to know that they can get a good deal if they keep shopping with you and introduce your services to the surrounding zips. Now if you know these zip codes, then you know okay those people that are living in the zip codes that are not my immediate customers, then I can advertise an introduction to my company, to my services, to my products. So. Uh, loyalty program advertising would be like, hey, this is so-and-so candle store. Um, did you know that it, on your 10th visit, you're gonna get a free tote bag full of goodies? So what, they're gonna come, every time they're gonna punch that card 10 times because they want the free goodies. goodies. So now, it, to introduce your services on the surrounding areas, your advertising would kind of sound like, hey, this candle store is existing in this, this location, and on specific dates, like if you list them, we're having events like such and such. We're having candle making events. We're having, where you get to take home the candle that you make. So those are the kind of advertising that you want for people that have never heard of your um, of your store before. We have some more chairs up here. Okay. Negotiate for additional exposure with media channel that you choose. A lot of these media channels, like the newspapers and magazines, and any publications that come to you, even online, um, uh, online advertising, you can negotiate with them to give you more exposure. You buy an ad for a specific size for this date, ask them, hey, what else can you throw in there? You know, I'm pretty sure that they don't, they're not fully booked, right? Um, and I know this for a fact because I work with a lot of them, so a lot of them actually, you just don't know on the side when they're starting to not fill up their pages, they start to give it out to people they know. So you build a good relationship with them and try to, try to get them to throw in some free stuff for you and you, won't know until you ask that you can get things for yourself, right? So make sure that you ask. Serve food and possibly wine at your event. So at this candle store, we know that the mothers, the stay-at-home moms, they love wine and food and cheese and all that. So make sure you put on your flyer, hey, we're serving wine, we're partnering with this local restaurant and they're serving wine and cheese. So that's awesome, they're gonna come. They wanna get drunk. <laughs> <laughs> or tipsy, all right? Invite food trucks. So you know these moms, they, they're foodies. So why don't you call a few food trucks, do a little um, negotiation, and see if they can come in at, at their own cost, not that some, something that you have to pay for. Maybe they want to introduce their business to in that area. So you would know that if you do your research. So there's a lot of research that you need to do to have a really successful event. Make it a girl's night out, right? Candles. Wine, <laughs> food, it's kind of sounding a little romantic, but make it a girls night out, ladies night out event. And invite other businesses in your surroundings to be an event partner. That's what you're gonna call them. Hey, send them a letter. Hey, would you like to be an event partner at this event that we're doing? It's gonna involve candle making, it's gonna involve wine, and our target market, you tell them what your target market is, because that's how they're gonna be excited about partnering with you if it's the same target market, but not competing with your product. Hey, tip number three, that's me again. You mm -hmm. find your goal. So how can you achieve something if you never really even set a goal? What do you, what, how do you know you've achieved it if you didn't set it, right? So you, ha you have to define your goals before you do an event. So sample event goals that you would want. I want to increase sales. I want to increase daily foot traffic in my store. I want to increase my email database. Who, ha who collects emails and who has an email database? 
All right, mm -hmm. so we have a few here that collects emails and sends out information to increase your sales, right? Um, increase Facebook likes. Okay, show hands, who has Facebook? Yeah, who doesn't like Facebook, but have Facebook? <laughs> Thanks for being honest, sir. Uh, <clears throat> so Facebook is really a great way to communicate with other people. Well, let's, let's go down the line. Who has Twitter? All right, who has Instagram? YouTube channel? Google Plus? Right, right, Google Plus, raise your hand. All right, thank you. If you do not have a Google Plus, I really suggest that you sign, sign up for Google Plus. You know why? Because Google Plus is a product of? Google. Google, and <laughs> Google is the number one search engine. And so when you search your name, if you're on Google Plus, usually on the right hand corner, you will see information about yourself when you search yourself, and the stuff that you put on your Google Plus is the one that shows up up there. You may not be on the search result, but you're on here on the right hand side. So make sure that you sign up for Google Plus, especially if you have a brick and mortar store, it's really important because when people are on their phones looking for a local shoe repair, a local wine tasting event, the Google Plus information comes up first because it's a Google product. Increase your web sales, that's a good, um, goal to have for your event. Even if, even though you have a brick and mortar store, maybe you do want to increase your web sales because a lot of your customers might be out of this town, out of this country, out of your zip codes, and they don't come to your store, but you still get their sales, right? You want to make money, however you got to do it, you got to do it. Gain more referrals. That would be a great goal too if you're having an event. Let's say you have an event for all your loyal customers. Well, actually, you have an event, but a lot of your loyal customers come because they pay attention to your emails and your um, and your advertisement. So a lot of them are going to come. So what if you give them a perk that if they refer someone, they get a discount or they get a gift, or if you refer some, bring someone new next time I have this event, and you're going to get thirty percent off your purchase. Right? They're going to bring someone new. They're going to bring their husbands, who doesn't even like candles. <laughs> but they're going to buy something. So another example. See, this is the ladies that I was talking about. Maybe uh, this, These are images that I've Googled just to give a feel of what a ladies' night out would look like. You have that. Oh, you have that. I really like that. So ladies' night out. If you were to do ladies' night out, OK, by show of hands, who has businesses in here that cater to women? We have quite a few. Ladies, that are not a bad idea. I've done a few of them, and the ladies love them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so event elements and what it accomplishes. These are examples, just to get you to thinking of how, how to strategize your own event, OK? So you have raffle items, and you have to require an email for them to get that raffle ticket. What do you get? You're going to increase your email database. Right? Because on that raffle item, when they sign up, you're going to put on there, by signing up for a raffle item, you are opting in to my email database. So do you want the raffle or not? Right? <laughs> it's a trap, but it works. Because nobody reads the details, but if they ever complain, you're like, hey, that thing said it on there. <laughs> Offer an exclusive discount. It's an urgency. So if they're there today, you're going to say, this discount is only available today. I never do this discount. I never do 50% off all my items in the store. So you got to get it now while it's hot. What do you do? You increase your sales during your event. If you offer a discount when they return. So who who shops at Bath, uh, Bath and Bottle Works? Don't, don't you like that coupon they give you? Okay, I just bought $50 of stuff. Now you're going to give me a coupon. I'm going to save $25 on my $50 purchase. But on my next purchase, what about this purchase? But it gets you to come back. So give them a coupon, a discount, that when they return, they get that discount. And that's going to increase, you, increase your foot traffic. Host weekly activities. I have a client, and we do Kids Club every, um, every week. We do uh, free Zumba class. Who's heard of Zumba? Now, you guys, if you have a brick and mortar store, Zumba can get people in there. If you have the space, Zumba can get people in there. Free Zumba? Yes. Um, partner with other health-related uh, companies in your area, Herbalife, It Works, and all that. It's a great event. It works like a charm. I do it a lot. <laughs> Increase foot traffic on chosen days. If you're going to host, so you know that your Wednesdays are just really, really slow. So why not do free Zumba on Wednesdays at like 6 p.m.
people are off work. So then, you know, just make sure when you do that, that you're prepared, that when they come in, they see those discounts, there's promotions, these new products. So make sure that it's all um, attractive to the eyes, make them want to buy. So that's your number one goal. Offer additional discount when they like your Facebook page. So tell them, hey, like my Facebook, even though they're in your store right now and they're your customers, it doesn't mean they like your Facebook page already. So those are extra likes that you can get when you're at your event and you tell them, hey, like my page, show me you like my page and you can get this free tote bag. You know, so whatever it is that you're offering. So that will obviously increase your social media followers. Promote a hashtag. If you have an event, um, let's, let's say it was the candle making event, um, candles and oils galore. Maybe that's your <laughs> hashtag. Then make them use it. Use your hashtag. And if I see it on my Twitter, um, tag me, use the hashtag, and you'll get this prize, you know? So increase your web traffic that way. Um, offer a referral fee. If they refer someone, they, they get something in return. I talked about that. That will increase your new customers. You want new customers, because you want new people to impress, new people that want to be loyal to your business. Hire a photographer or a photo booth and let everyone know that photos will be posted on your Facebook. That works like a charm too. If you have a photo booth and they're, you know, they're putting up the afros and the <laughs> feathers and all that, and, and they're having fun with their friends, they're gonna want to see those photos. So hey, you tell them you want to see these photos, like our Facebook page. It's gonna be on our Facebook in a couple days or tonight, depending on how fast you work. So budget constraints. If you have, who has budget constraints? Want to do a big Ooh. event, but have budget constraints. <laughs> I know the feeling. Most of my clients are the same way. I have to be super creative to work with budgets. <laughs> so what I've learned that helps with that is to create partnership with local non-competing businesses or nonprofit organizations. I've worked with over 100, like from YMCA to Boys and Girls Club to Relay for Life, American Cancer Society, name it. I've worked with almost everything from the South Bay area. And what's great about that is because they have an agenda. Their agenda is to expose their nonprofit, to get some more people to donate to them. So the, the plus side on you is that when they come, they have giveaways, they have tote bags, they have pens, they have water bottles, they have giveaways to give to your people when you give them a booth at your event. Um, if you partner with other uh, local businesses that are not competing with yours, it's awesome because it's, it's a synergy. Uh, my friend here, Lisa, see she's an instructor uh, for Kaya Fitness, Kaya Fit. And let's say she wanted to do a grand opening event, which she has. She's a she's a fitness instructor. Then she might want to partner with like Herbalife. She doesn't offer supplements. And Herbalife offers supplements, so it makes it a good environment for people to really think about their health. Then it gives them an urgency. Hey, maybe I really need to get in shape. You know, <laughs> then Herbalife brings all their muscle men and their sexy females. So you were like, okay, I need to look like that. I need to come to her class. <laughs> so it makes them think like that. It's all about perception. Um, partner with local clothing stores. Um, they can host. Uh, you, they can host a fashion show at your venue. If you do own that candle store, you don't have clothing, so you can have a fashion show. Your moms would love to see fashion show, right? Um, partner with local nonprofit organizations that can host like arts and crafts, and they're really good at that. Nonprofits are. Um, maybe partner with a local catering company that can host a bar. Maybe it's not an alcoholic bar. Maybe it is an alcoholic. Create an event partnership agreement and be very clear on profit or expense share. If you are going to partner with other people, make sure you look up some event agreement or maybe you have, you're working with a lawyer. Ask them what's a good event, uh, event partnership agreement that I can have with these partners because at the end of the day, maybe they're like, hey, you told me I'm going to make this amount um, or they're going to say, I thought I'm going to make this amount of money by coming to your event, but I did it and they're going to be mad at you, but you, you have agreed and it's said on there that I, you're not guaranteed to make any certain amount. It's gonna be up to you, up to your own hustle, you know, whatever the agreement says. So make sure you are um, legalized before you make any of these partnerships and they understand what it is that they're gonna get and what it is that is up to the event for like the profit. It's gonna be up to the event, all right? If, I mean, if they're gonna come and partner with you and they have a table and it's not well done, obviously they're not gonna attract a lot of people at their tables. That's not your fault, so you wanna be sure. Hey, tip number four, get some helpers. Just like Santa, we need a little else. So <laughs> when we do our events, we can't do it all by ourselves. And as a matter of fact, if you're the host, you need not to be doing a lot of things at the day of your event, because you need to be dressed up, you need to be made up, and you need to be mingling. That's what you need to do on the day of your event, okay? So you've got to ask. 
I said that earlier. You're not gonna get it if you don't ask for it. Ask responsible friends, email them. Helpful families, right? Not everybody's helpful, so I have to put that in there. Helpful <laughs> families. <laughs> um, volunteers from organization partners. Like I said, if you or, uh, if you volu- or if you partner with uh, nonprofit organizations, they're gonna be able to provide you with some volunteers because they do have a roster of volunteers. So ask them. And Craigslist, Craigslist ad. Yes. <laughs> um, I've done a lot of fashion shows, and this is LA, so everybody wants to volunteer in the big, in the next big fashion show. Um, that's just an example. Um, and so I get a lot of volunteers from Craigslist, and I interview them. I m- want to make sure that they're responsible because you don't want to j- them to just show up, and then they're going to be more trouble than helpful. Okay. So make sure that you ask for help, and make it worth their while. Present it like it's a big deal to help you. You know. Uh, prepare a formal letter of request for their help. Um, in my ebook, if you guys are interested in buying it, there's an example on there, and all you need to do is fill out their names. <laughs> um, it'll say, Dear so and so, I have this event coming up, and I really think you have the talents to be a part of this and help me really make this a successful event. So, something uh, along those lines that will really make them feel like they should really help you. <laughs> Prepare a formal letter of recognition along with an appreciation letter. Do you know these certificates? They're not that expensive, uh, office depot. Print them mm-hmm. out after your event. Give it to them. To thank them for helping you for the day of your event. And even uh, all your um, event partner and sponsors and all that, print one out for them. You know? That's it. You know what that's going to do for you? They're going to post it in their office. Other people are going to see it. That's another exposure for you. <coughs> okay, and you know those plaques? There are places out there that sell plaque and they're engraving and everything for like less than $10 each. So a plaque giving, uh, if you have a big sponsor, they have a big office, put their plaque on there, that's, you don't put your logo on that plaque. That's more exposure for you again. Um, event planning tip number five, manage your guests. You know, you don't want this event and all your guests is just coming into the door because you did a really good job with marketing and promotion. Now there's like a thousand people at your door and how are you going to manage the lines, the VIPs, the general admission, how are you going to do that? So you make sure that you want to prepare for how you're going to manage your guests. Why? You should implement RSVPs. I really, really am a big believer believer of RSVPs. Who in here has heard of Eventbrite? How about doitinperson.com? That's a new one. Actually, I met them here last year. And they're just like Eventbrite. There's a lot of companies like that out there, and you can use them. Even if you're giving away, um, even if you're not charging for admission, at least tell your um, guests to RSVP so you know how many people are coming. It will help you determine the turnout for your event beforehand. It will help you collect everyone's emails and communicate with them regarding any announcements. So when you have an Eventbrite page and you're selling tickets or you're um, encouraging them to RSVP, guess what you get in return? Their emails, right? Because they can't register if they don't put their emails in. So now you have a way to communicate with them a few days before, a few weeks before, um, or a few months before your event. You can keep sending them different kinds of emails to remind them to come to your event, bring some friends, and bring some family. You can see firsthand how well your promotional strategies are working for you. Let's say you put an event uh, right Eventbrite page out there, you're selling tickets, you haven't done any promotion. So the sales, ticket sales are probably slowly uh, going up, but not fast enough. So then, let's say you bought a radio ad, then all of a sudden you see skyrocket. So you know what kind of promotions you're doing that will increase your ticket sales. So make sure you do that. As soon as you think of an event, open an Eventbrite page for it, and you can customize it. Normally it would be like, Oils and candles event dot eventbrite.com. So it'd be so much, uh, it, it's not hard for anyone to remember where to go to to get your tickets. So those are the two uh, companies that I actually use. Um, offer perks for uh, people that register early. So you want them to register early because you want to start mm-hmm. giving, you want to start emailing information out there. So tell them. The first 100 people to register will receive a free tote bag. And show a photo of what the tote bag looks like, because if it looks really, really good, you're really going to get a lot of response. The first 50 people receive a free manicure. Maybe you're not a, a beauty salon place, but you partnered with one, and they want traffic in their store, and they're willing to give you 50 free manicures. Isn't that something great?
great to offer your people. Um, the first 25 people receiving will receive a complimentary candle making class for free, and you get to take home your candles, right? Again, that's going back to my candle store example. <laughs> mm -hmm. The first 10 people get a chance to win a gift basket worth $100. So you get my point? Get, give them reasons to come and register early for your event. Crowd control. I love crowd control. Um, so you gotta have to think about your VIP line. Did you sell general admission and VIP um, VIP tickets? You need to think about how you how this the flow of lines of people and um, registering at the event. How that's gonna go? General admission line signage. Signage is very important when it comes to crowd control. If you have let's say about 300 people and your door is right here and everybody's out there. The people at the end of the line, they're not gonna see if you have a signage right at your door, the VIP line is here and general admission is here. And trust me, this is all coming from experience because I've had those experience before. Um, so you want signage way out there too. If you have stanchions, you know those velvet robes, make sure that there's signage on each velvet, uh, on each stand of saying this is a VIP line, this is a general admission line. So make sure you, you are very well aware of those things. Line control stanchions. And ushers in place. Make sure that you have volunteers, you know those helpers, ushers, you need to get them to the end of the line so they can tell people because there's nothing, there's nobody matter that day than a VIP customer who stood in the general admission mm. line for a, a lot of time. Just when they get to the front, they realize there was a VIP line they didn't know, they're gonna be mad. So you don't want any mad customers. See? Who wants that in front of their store, right? Mm. <laughs> So, event planning tip number six, obtain a sponsor, a partner, or a co-host. So who in here has obtained sponsors before? This is awesome. Any spot, anyone obtain more than $10,000 worth of sponsorship? Ah, oh, more than $20,000? Ah, oh, all right. So maybe I need to talk to these people. <laughs> How to do that, because that's a whole other presentation, right? How to get sponsorships. Sponsors can really save the day. Major sponsors, uh, there's different levels of sponsorship. Uh, the most basic terms that people uh, use are gold sponsors, platinum sponsors, silver sponsors, bronze. And then when you get down to the less than 100 friends of you know, sponsors. So service trade sponsor, are those where they don't give you any money or any funds up front, but they do trade something. Maybe it's a printer company that wants to print all your flyers and in return they want their stamp on your flyers and they want you to, t to announce to your event that they're a sponsor at your event. Giveaway sponsor. Maybe they don't want to give you money, they don't want to do any trade shows, but they had like 10,000 tote bags left from their last event, hey, use it. You can put a lot of the stuff in there for yourself, flyers and brochures, business cards. Recognize all your sponsors. That's the main thing that the sponsors like is to get recognized and to make sure that you I guess for lack of a better term, praise them. You know, we thank these sponsors because without them we wouldn't have been able to do this and they're doing this, uh, uh, this great um, event for us and with us and um, they're a part of it. So they want to be a part of your event. Sponsorship package. So in my ebook, it, I have put on there an example of one of the sponsorship packages that I've done which um, it's one of the events that I have coming up actually. So you, you want to make sure there's introduction and you want to put your credentials on there. Why do they want to, why, why would they trust you? You know what, you might just want to take uh, take their money and run, you know? So they want to see that you've worked with different, several other events. If you can put a referral on there and say, hey, um, I was the one that did this event for a company you worked with before, you know? So they want to see those credentials. A formal, le a formal letter to the sponsor included on that package too. A summary of the event. What is the event about? We talked about target market, how you're going to promote your event. They're going to want to know those because if you're going to be doing some radio ads, big billboards, they're going to get excited. Their logo is going to be on that too. So make sure you include that on there. A summary of any VIP guests. If you have celebrities coming, if you have city officials coming, anyone important coming, um, and a lot of people, and I've noticed this, um, they put on their confirmed guests and they put on their invited guests. You see the difference? <laughs> I invite a guest, Michelle Obama. <laughs> that doesn't mean they're coming, but they were invited, right? But a lot of those things really um, um, help you with your sponsorship packages. But it may, you know, make sure you don't lie. If you have confirmed guests, you have confirmed guests. If, if 
that many though. Copy of the flyer, synopsis of your marketing plan, sponsorship options and benefits, photos of past events or of your store, you know, or, and, and, and a commitment form. That very last page, make sure you have a commitment form where they can put their name, the company name, how much they want to donate, um, so that you have that commitment right there. Ah, tip number seven, promote your event. And I'm gonna rush a little bit because I'm running out of time. Because you guys are too much fun to talk to. <laughs> you must give yourself one month to promote your event. You will spend anywhere from 80 to 150 hours planning an event if you're doing this by yourself. And here are our rules of thumb. Uh, if it's less than 50 guests, two months of preparation is really good. If it's more than 50, 100 guests, three to four months of preparation. Uh, if it's more than 100 guests, I recommend six months to a year preparation. If you have, depending really on what you're doing at your event. But the more guests you have, the more, I, I can send this PDF to you if you leave your, leave your business card. Sorry, yeah, some of you guys were late. If you leave your business card, I can send this to you. Promotional calendar, 30, day, 30 days to go checklist. That is included in my ebook. I put on there 30 days to go, 29 days to go, 20 days. I put a very succinct list of my ebook in there. If you, you guys that just walked in, um, my ebook is available on Amazon. Uh, the 10 step guide to successful event is $8.99, but for you guys, if you leave your um, business cards here, I, I will give it to you guys, but I believe it was, it's $2.99. My awesome. business partner, I think it's $2.99. <laughs> Um, Facebook JavaScript. Who has heard of Facebook JavaScript? Ah, you hate Facebook and you know I so much about Facebook. Put my T versus Squarespace. Awesome. Do you know that there's a JavaScript you can use to invite all your friends? You don't have to sit there and click each and every one of your wow. people. Ah, it's in my ebook. Okay. Uh huh. <laughs> it's actually you can all uh, actually Google it to uh, YouTube it and see um, a lot of instructions are out there. And just to let you know, there's different JavaScripts that work with different. Um, uh, web processors. So if you're Google, Chrome, or your uh, Explorer, there's a different ones. So, so if it doesn't work, it's because of that. So you got to keep searching for JavaScript. That works. And when you find that, it's a gold mine. You put that on there, it invites every single person in your list. That's it. Video marketing. Who in here does video marketing? You should. <laughs> put yourself in a video and start talking. Hey, I want to invite you guys to my event because it's a great event and you're going to get this, blah, blah, blah. Put it on Facebook. I mean, on YouTube and Facebook and all that good stuff. Mobile marketing. Anybody has apps? Any? Yeah, I just started my app. So it's awesome. You can send push notification. And what, what is push notification? It's pretty much a text that you can send to people that have downloaded your mobile app. So, yeah, marketing these days, they won't let you sleep. <laughs> Blogging. Who blogs? Awesome. Me too. <laughs> oh, event planning tip number eight, invite the press. We have a PR person here, so it's really important that you make your event newsworthy. You write your press release, and the elements are who, what, when, where. And it's a very short, short and succinct summary of your event. You can also write a media alert, and that's basically an, uh, an invitation for these um, journalists or reporters or whatever to come to your event. That's what a media alert is, um, as opposed to a press release. And I have examples on my ebook on what those look like. Ah, tip number nine, prepare a day of schedule for your staff and your volunteer. So you have 15 volunteers. How are you going to tell them what to do? You're going to uh, know who is in charge of setup, what time they should start decorating, who's in charge of guest signing, how will the guests know where to register, so all these things. And I have more questions on my ebook that you can, um, you can really look at and see what volunteers can do for you. So, the tip is to give them a really detailed time frame. At 8 a.m. when you guys come, this is what I want you guys to do, this is where I want you to be, and when you're done with that, this is the next thing I want you to do. You have to sit down and really think about that because volunteers don't have your mind frame. They don't have your business in their minds, so you have to give them information. I'm on tip number 10, yes. Label all your staff. Why is that important? That's great customer service for your customers to know who to uh, seek to get help. Where are the restrooms? Where do I get this? Where do I get that? If your staff is not labeled, they're gonna get frustrated. Who is here to help me today? So make sure you label them. You know, you have the stick-ons too, that's great, but if you can spend your money on a lanyard, if you can give them shirts, that would be more awesome. Great customer service. Name tags are fine, but t-shirts and lanyards are better. Yeah, two more slides. <laughs> So I have my bonus tip for you guys for being here, and you'll get it on my ebook too, is post marketing. Who does post marketing? Meaning after your event, you're still marketing that event, right? It's very important because you need to post photos. What 
they missed. Write a press release about what happened. Maybe you had invited guests that actually came. You can put that on your press release. Hey, Michelle Obama really came. <laughs> um, host a po uh, post-mortem meeting with everyone involved. Maybe you can get all your volunteers. Again, you can present them those certifi certificates and ask them suggestions for what you can do better for your next event. That's a really important meeting to have. Um, let the world know that it was a great event, and if you aren't here, you missed it, but we have our next event at this date. That's how you're gonna do your post -marketing. Final thought, and this is coming from a very famous producer in Hollywood, Jarvie Hutchison. As the host of the event, you want to focus on mingling with your guests, not running around taking care of event details. That's how you're gonna be a superstar at your own event. And thank you so much for being here today. We're at booth 619. I have brochures and business cards here. If you leave your business cards, I can send you a link to that ebook for 299. Okay? Thank awesome. you guys. Thank you. Thank you.